Hello, everybody. That was the introduction to Days and Wine and Roses by Wes Montgomery. The reason I chose to play that this, today was that I was thinking about when I was asked to put together a video, what should I do? And in terms of learning how to play the guitar, there's a, thousands of videos on YouTube that will tell you everything you need to know from A to Z anything you want to do on how to play the guitar. What I decided to do was think about two of the three of the big ideas that I was told over the years that have kind of formed my opinion, my understanding of music and how to play music. And maybe if I can share those ideas with you, we can t have a conversation about what is important in music? What are the things that you need to be thinking about as you go on this path? One of the reasons I played the Days of Wine and Roses is one is that it was from one of my favorite guitar players of all time, Wes Montgomery. And it's a very difficult piece to play and to play well, which brings me to my first point. They said that the guitar is an extremely easy instrument to play, but extremely difficult to play well. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about today, because when you first get to the guitar, you're going to learn things that are very easy, like the first chord, C, to F, to G, and back. That's the very basics of the guitar. But as you start learning, you start learning how to put other elements on that, such as a bar chord. So that first, that same way I played that C, to the F, to that G, I can also play it like C, to the F to the G. So that was the second thing I learned. And then we started learning, okay, well maybe there's ways to actually play it in such a way that I only had to play a couple of notes of it. Such as this. Or maybe if we play these little notes, we see that there's ways of doing things. That the guitar is actually a series of patterns and structures that are based around a few musical notes. So let's talk a little bit about those musical notes and what they actually mean, which comes to the second thing that I learned, which was that everything, all music is based on seven basic notes. In the key of C, we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then the octave becomes a C. Those are the only notes that music is formed. The notes in between are the flats and the sharps, but we're not going to talk about all that today but just a basic understanding. So the octave is made when I start off with a C and I go back to the next highest C, which is there. And we all recognize the octave. Anybody's heard Wes Montgomery or George Benson? Those are what's called octaves. And you'll see those a lot in music. So if we understand that these are the numbers, these are the notes that are played. One, which is also known as Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. So that is the whole musical vocabulary, but then it's just combined in so many ways. So a lot of times we'll talk about that either as a Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do, or sometimes we'll just call it as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to the octave. All music, most music, I should say, is based on some combination of those notes. Now, one of the most famous ones is called the one, to the four, to the five. And let me show you a little bit about how we talk about that. One, four, five in the key of C. That has been a form of so many music. That is a gospel. We can put a little bit of a seventh chord and we get a blues. Right? Again, one, four, five. Just one, four, to the five. Now, I used to play with the African church for several years. I was a lead guitar player for the African church and with African music, again, one, four, five. Then 
but sometimes we, we change up again. We'll add some other elements, such as the six, and you've probably all heard this combination. Virtually every doo-wop song that came out in the 50s was based on a chord change. Now, if we want to look at some of the jazz elements of those changes, let's look at what we call rhythm changes, which is the one to the six, two, five, one. So when we played it out, we go. Now what jazz did and what Duke Ellington made very popular was to go to the two to the five of the root of the C chord and again two to the five which takes us back to the head of the B flat. So all together when we do rhythm changes we're going Kind of did. So every type of music has its own shapes, its own forms, its own chords. Now, when I was a young kid, I was wandering around uh, down the Smithsonian uh, one summer with my guitar. I think I was about 17 to 18 years old. So this was like in the early 70s. And I ran across some old blues guys there, a guy named Johnny Shine and Chief Ellis. Both of them used to play with Robert Johnson in the Delta. And they said, boy, can you play that guitar? I said, well, I think so, sir. So they invited me on up the stage and play. And see, because they all spoke the language of music, we knew almost everything is going to be in a one, four, five. So all they would do is the piano player would get out there and say, okay, this one's in G. They start playing the G. And we all communicated. Then the next guy said, hey, well, this one's in A minor. We're going to one, four, one, four, five. So the point of what I'm trying to say is that when we start studying the music, that we should all understand that all of the patterns which create the music and understanding those patterns allows you to talk and communicate with other musicians. Now, I told you one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are the notes. So if I tell you if the one is on an A, a, B, C, D, E. Now it becomes a five, right? I want you to learn that because we're going to have a little quiz on it later on. Okay? So, which leads me to my last thing that I want to discuss today, which is, um, it'll be easier for me to show you. Okay. Believe it or not, this is a fully functioning guitar. And the reason I wanted to tell you about this guitar is that because my last point, this is guitar is going to make two points. One is that I'm going to have told you I was going to give you a little quiz at the end of this. But the other thing is that the guitar is the only instrument that you can virtually take anywhere and play anywhere. You can sit down watching your favorite show. You could be sitting down watching Family Feud one night and you can pick up your guitar and you can do the you can just play around with it. You can play around and do anything you want with the guitar. I can't think of any other instrument you can do. You can't sit on your living room couch and play your sax while you're watching TV. You can't sit on the front porch and play your piano. The guitar is the one instrument that you can virtually take anywhere and enjoy it and learn it and practice it. And that's the one thing that I want everybody to know. Now for the quiz, this guitar, I've used this guitar uh, at times because when I travel overseas, I can't carry a full guitar, baggage restrictions, all that kind of stuff. You know, they charge you almost the price of another plane ticket just to carry a guitar with you. So I found this little guy, and it's actually a fully functioning guitar. But what it is, is actually, if you look at a standard guitar, this guitar starts here on the, on the neck of a standard guitar. So all of this above 
is not on this guitar. This guitar is actually starts fretted right here and then goes downwards. And then you put a little small body. So remember what I was talking about, one, four, five. The one on a standard guitar on this string is going to be E. But on this guitar, it's a fifth up. So the fifth up from an E is A. Okay? That's an A. So if I'm playing the next string, which normally would be an A, a fifth up from an A is a D. So that becomes a D. Now let's complicate it a little bit. So if I play an E chord on a standard guitar, I play it here. But since this is actually a fifth up, this is no longer an E chord. This now becomes the fifth of E, which is going to be, the fifth of E is going to be a B. So this is a B. So the question I have for the quiz of you, and I'll give you the answer a little later on, is that if I play a C chord, understanding tuning, what is the fifth of C? So when I play the C chord on this guitar, it's actually a fifth up from the original key of C. So think about that for a while. And as I got to say that the three things that I wanted to talk about is that number one is that music and the guitar is extremely easy to play, but extremely hard to play well. Number two is you got to learn the forms and the shapes and the basic concepts of music so you can talk to each other in the language of music. And third, the guitar, like this little guy has proven, is about the only instrument that you can actually go out and play anywhere, anytime you want, if you want to sit on the porch. The ones who used to tell me there was a story about Jimi Hendrix, they said Jimi Hendrix never went anywhere without his guitar. If he went to walk down to the corner store to buy whatever, he carried his guitar with him and played it every time. Now, I'm not saying everybody needs to do that, but the only instrument we can actually do this. So, by the way, the answer to the question is that if I play a C chord on a normal guitar, that C chord up a fifth now becomes G. And that is the answer. Thank you for me spending a little bit of time with you. And next time, let's talk about musicality and notes. So one of the things that I... Other thing that I would want to talk to uh, sometime, I didn't have a ton of time today, is that somebody told me, he said, whenever you play a solo, whenever you play music, make it musical, make it something so you sing to it. If you ever watch videos and you see jazz guys playing, you'll see that they'll, they'll be humming, they'll be talking, almost like they're talking to themselves. What they're doing is they're singing the melody of what they're actually playing. So if you actually play music, don't play just mindless notes. Play something that you can sing, and when you do that, your audience will relate to you and hear what you're saying. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk with you guys a little bit, and we'll do this again sometime. All right.